We're going to be multiplying numbers in any order. This is lesson 12.5. So remember, two numbers that we multiply together, like 2 times 3, these are factors. And the answer is called the product. All right? This says 2 times 3 is equal to 6. Well, numbers can be multiplied in any order, just like numbers can be added in any order. That's the commutative property. If we have 2 times 3, that's going to equal 6. And if we turn the numbers around to a different order, 3 times 2 is also equal to 6. So it didn't matter which one was first and which one was second. We still had 6. It's the same thing with addition. 2 plus 3 is going to is equal to 5, and 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. It didn't matter which number we had first and which number we had second. Now, the reason that this happens is from a thing called the commutative property. Because there's a multiplication sign here, that's the commutative property of multiplication, and because there's addition signs here, that's the commutative property of addition. I'm going to talk more about this in third grade math, okay? So don't worry too much about it. I just wanted to show it to you. So what it's saying is we can have three groups that have two in each group, and that's going to equal six, or we could have two groups that have three in each group. See? Here we had three groups, now we have two groups. It's almost like we took this one and turned it sideways so that it looked like this. See? We're going to get the same product, all right? So the commutative property says the answer will be the same when we switch the order of the numbers, all right? So we're going to take a look at that right now. Look at these two grids. We've got one, two, three, four rows of two, don't we? This is four times two. One row, two row, three row. Here's the four, and there's two in each row. So that's the 4 times 2. That equals 8. And if we have two rows that have 4 in them, we still have 8. See that? We could do 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, and that's going to equal 8. Or we could do 4 plus 4, and that's going to equal 8. All right? Let's take a look at this one. Here we have 2 times 5. We have one row of 5, two rows of 5. See? We have two rows, and there's five in each row. And look at this one. We have one, two, three, four, five rows. So we have a five here, but there's only two in each row. So we have five times two. They're both ten. It's almost as if we took this one, and we turned it sideways like that. See? We rotated it. Okay? So let's take a look at this. It says write the missing number and multiply write the missing numbers. So the first thing we need to do is it says blank rows of blank. So how many rows do we have here? We have one, two, three rows. And how many are in each row? Well, we have one, two, three. So that was easy. We have three rows of three. Our multiplication sentence is going to be three times three. See? That's a multiplication sentence. It's a number sentence that has multiplication in it. Okay? And what is 3 times 3? Oh, we can count these. We have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay? Let's try another one. Now look at this. How many rows do we have? We put that number here, and how many are in each row goes here. We have one, two, three, four rows. And how many are in each row? One, two, three. And they all have an equal amount in each row, don't they? It's not like one is missing, okay? You have to have the same amount in every row. So, because we have four rows of three, we have four times three. And what is four times three? We have three. 4, 5, 6. Well, wait a minute. We just did 3 here. 3 times 3 is 9. So we know this one is 9. We can just go 10, 11, 12. We can use the information from the previous 
problem to help us solve this one. See? You could count all these yourself, but we could also take the information from the previous problem. When we got up to here, it was 9. If we add 3 more, it'll be 10, 11, 12. See? All right. It says add or multiply. We've got three yellow hexagons and three yellow hexagons. That's three plus three, isn't it? And three plus three is six. We also have one group, two groups with three in each group. Two times three is six. See? Multiplication is just repeated addition. It's saying we have two threes. See? One, two. All right? Let's try this one. We need to do it as a number sentence. This is horizontally. And then we need to do it vertically in vertical form. Okay? So it says four times five. We have five here, five here, five here, and five here. So we have four of them with five in each group. See that? And we can skip count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20. And 4 times 5 is 20. We can also say 5 plus 5 is 10, and this 5 plus 5 is 10. So we have 10 plus 10, and that's 20. See? And 5, plus four, five times 4 is the same thing as this 4 times 5. See? Here is the number of groups, and here's how many are in each group. See? Here's the number of groups and how many are in each group. And now here's the number of groups and here's how many are in each group. We have 20. Okay? And it didn't matter which one we did first, did it? Because the commutative property said we could do that. Okay? So, remember that a multiplication sentence is just a number sentence that has multiplication in it. All right? Just like an addition sentence is a number sentence with a plus sign, and a subtraction sentence is a number sentence with a minus sign. Okay? We're going to continue on, and we're going to keep, keep talking about multiplying, and we're going to solve some word problems that have multiplication. They involve multiplication. Okay? I'll see you there. Have a great day. Don't forget to hit the like button if I helped. Bye.